Okay, next presentation, um, it's by Angelo. Um, Angelo Calabrese and the um, is from Polite Politecnico, uh, Politecnico Milano. And the title of the talk is Influence of the Test Setup on the Bond Behavior of FRCM Composites. Okay, so thank you, Professor. Martin for, for the presentation and good afternoon all of you. Well, as one of the main learning objectives of this section was the assessment of testing methods for the mechanical characterization of for some composites, we decided to um, arrange um, a presentation which deals with the influence of different test modalities on the bond response of for some composites. Let me try to go. Okay. Well, it is well established how uh, composite materials represent a very effective and cost efficient alternative to traditional strengthening methods in reason of their very low weight, their outstanding uh, strength, fast, and easy of execution. And within those general framework, a fabric reinforced cementitious mortar composites. Uh, are gaining a growing popularity due to the significant advantages uh, guaranteed by the use of inorganic matrix, such as better behavior at high temperature rather than a four piece, for example, better fire resistance, fiber permeability that assume a significant role for the application durability, reversibility, and many others. Despite of the very high performances of FRCM constituents, it is reported that the failure of a FRCM strengthened element may occur at a very far lower level than their ultimate capacity due to loss of addition of the composite from the substrate according to different failure modes. Uh, it is reported as well that for uh, for same application employing one single layer of a textile, uh, the bonding typically occurs according to the so-called fiber, mat fiber matrix interface, the bonding, with high uh, global slip uh, of fiber from um, the matrix. Well, uh, this sort of the bonding mode depends mainly on the weak impregnation capability of the inorganic matrix uh, on the core filament of each yarn. Uh, this entails for uh, the telescopic failure, the telescopic displacement of core filaments that are free to sleep with respect to sleeve filaments and to matrix itself that eventually uh, gave rise to that huge global sleep at the loaded end under the effect of an applied force. So uh, given the relevance of the, uh, the bonding failure, it, it has been um, important in the past decades to set up some um, test procedures to figure out what is the bond capacity of a first time application under different circumstances. Uh, the most uh, commonly used test setup that is also the one that typically uh, is reported in national standard is the so called single lap direct shear test that you see in the picture on the left. Well, this test consisted of a substrate block on which an FRCM3 is applied. The testing machine is applying a pulling action that is perfectly aligned with the fiber matrix interface, which eventually will induce the bonding in the specimen. And we will be able to track the global sleep at the loaded end by means of linear variable transducer, as well as the stress field by means of um, the load cell of which the, the testing machine will be equipped. Other similar uh, tests have been introduced later on in the years based on the same concept, such as the pull-out test. And indeed, as you see, uh, if you look at the uh, profile of the test setup, you will notice how that even in this case, the pulling action 
that will eventually bonding is perfectly aligned with the matrix fiber interface and so no out of plane action uh, will are involved in those testing procedure for this reason uh, some other uh, test setup have been introduced typically uh, referred to as indirect testing method or beam test um, setups which takes into account the presence of uh, orthogonal action to the interface resulting from uh, high deflection in the specimen or high curvature the presence of uh, this normal action to the interface is the result of uh, the formation of misalignment between the matrix fiber interface and the load direction which corresponds to the deflection angle alpha so t1 will be uh, proportional to both the magnitude of the pulling action t and the sinus of the angle alpha and may influence even significantly as we are going to see in the second part of the presentation the bond behavior of the interface so to fully characterize uh, the influence of a testing procedure on the bond results of a same um, FRCM composite, we arranged a test campaign uh, consisting of two sets of three specimens, respectively tested according to the direct shear test setup I already introduced, and, to, uh, and the uh, second set of three specimens has been tested according to the modified beam test setup that you are seeing displayed in the current slide. The setup is comprised of two separate plain concrete blocks joined together by a cylindrical hinge on the top side and by a continuous FRCM strip on the bottom side. The pulling action on the composite is applied by means of a four-point bending test setup uh, according to uh, the free body diagram you are seeing on the top right of the screen and at the meantime we are recording or we are tracking the displacement field of eight linear variable displacement transducer two of them will record the maximum deflection of the specimen other two the opening between blocks the remaining four are recording the eventual inward displacement of uh, fiber at the free ends of the two free ends of the specimen following the debonding. Last is something that will uh, became important for the remaining parts of the uh, presentation is that a 60 uh, millimeter bond gap length was left across mid span to prevent the edge failure of the uh, substrate block. Tests are conducted uh, in displacement control condition by monotonically increasing the downward displacement of the actuator at a constant rate. Uh, the um, axis stress mid span crack opening, that is actually the distance, the increasing distance between the bottom uh, side of the, uh, of the two blocks, is uh, plotted in these top left charts. Uh, as you can see, uh, initially the specimen would um, behave, uh, exploit this linear stage that is followed by two uh, subsequent loss or reduction of slope uh, depending on the opening of two matrix crack at the two ends of the bond gap length. After the reaching of the peak capacity, the specimen undergoes this um, descending branch due to the progressive softening and uh, cracking of the interface with that eventually plateaued at a constant value of stress that, is, uh, that accounts for the residual friction between fiber and matrix. Uh, approximately around the peak uh, stage of the test, all the three specimens tested under this condition started recording a free end slippage at one of the two free ends of the specimen, just one of the two, and we are going to see because just one. Uh, we, we have had the possibility to um, 
clock separately and independently the, the bonding process from the two sides of the specimen using a, a different measurement techniques. And what we noticed is that until approximately the uh, peak of the uh, global uh, response, we uh, recorded almost similar uh, global slip values from the two sides of the specimen. After the peak, one of the two sides that we referred to uh, with partially the bonded side, that is with the uh, orange curve in this plot, started behaving as a full constraint for the fiber, and uh, the bonding process onset just on the opposite side, that for this reason was uh, referred to with fully the bonded side. So the knowledge of this uh, non-symmetrical behavior of the specimen allowed us to extract uh, from the mid-span crack opening reading that we got, that we had for the three specimen, the uh, actual access stress versus global sleep response for the fully the modern side of the specimen, just applying the two equations that are displayed. So actually, we divided by two uh, the crack opening until the peak, and then we accounted the full crack opening to the fully debonded side according to what the, seta, the test procedure showed us. The three uh, cogs that you are seeing on this plot have been uh, reported with the red envelope in the top uh, right diagram, as well as significant values for the three curves are reported in the top parts of this table. Uh, sigma star stands for peak capacity, the maximum stress corresponding to the peak of each curve. G star is the corresponding slip. Sigma F is the final um, capacity, the residual capacity due to friction, and GF is the global slip corresponding with the beginning of the final plateau. Similarly, uh, the three curves corresponding to direct shear tested specimen have been reported in this picture. I will be very quick on that, uh, on that responses because this is sort of a um, legacy testing procedure. And as you can see, the uh, response of the three specimen is uh, actually consisting with that of the three modified beam uh, tested specimen. Uh, it consists of an initial ascending branch followed by a descending branch and eventually a final plateau uh, due to the residual friction and interlocking between fiber and matrix. Let's look at the comparison between the blue envelope that uh, represents the three dark shear results and the red envelope representing modified beam uh, results. So, uh, both the peak and residual capacity of modified beam tests were significantly higher than those of corresponding direct shear tests. And this, and this extra capacity was accountable to the presence of a normal action to the interface, which the pushing, by pushing fiber yarns against the matrix, the inner layer matrix age, is some way counteracting the telescopic, the free telescopic slippage of the fiber that we introduced at the beginning, and that is requiring an extra energy from uh, the um, test to fully exploit the capacity of the specimen. On the other hand, the same uh, normal action to the interface and the same pushing against the corner is some way reducing the displacement capacity of the specimen and this uh, reduction this effect is far more evident at the end of the test where in recent to a higher value of deflection angle this normal component will be higher in conclusion, we saw that both direct shear and modified beam tests provided uh, 
similar result, qualitatively similar result. However, the presence of a normal action to the interface determine a significant increase in both peak and the residual capacity of the specimen. And on the other hand, we got a reduction of uh, displacement capacity for specimen tested under modified beam test condition. It should be noticed that the presence of this uh, normal stress component pushing fiber against a sharp corner may even determine some local damaging of the fiber filament, and that will be uh, even more evident for fragile fibers such as carbon or in the case of application involving high uh, values of deflection. So that's the end of my presentation. Thank you all for the attention, and I will also to acknowledge the co-authors of this work that partake in making that presentation possible. Thank you. Thank you uh, very much, Angelo, for uh, for the uh, for the very nice presentation as far as the Toru very careful experiments.